Hi everybody, in this video, let's look at some past year questions. So in this video, I will focus on chapter 1, from for chapter 1, function. It is given that f of x is equal to 3 over 4x minus 1, and x is not equal to 1 over 4. So remember, when the x is uh, at the bottom of a fraction, I mean the x appear at the denominator of a fraction, we need to state the condition of x. We know that the denominator of a fraction cannot be equal to 0, right? So 4 divided by 0 is undefined. You can press your calculator, press, uh, press your calculator and see. You will get math error. So this is undefined. The denominator of a fraction cannot be equal to 0. So 4x minus 1, let's say we want to find the value of x, which will make this part become 0. We know that x is equal to 1 over 4, right? Since 4x minus 1, cannot be equal to 0, therefore x cannot be equal to 1 over 4, okay? Now, and fg of x is equal to this. We want to find, for the first part, we want to find the object of f of x if the image is 1 over 3. Let me draw an arrow diagram to help you to visualize the situation. Now I have a function f f of x is equal to this. I know not the object, but I know the image, which is equal to 1 over 3. Now we want to find the object. Means that what is the input that we are going to plug in here so that we will get the output of 1 over 3. f of x is equal to 1 over 3. What is f of x? We know f of x is equal to this whole thing, 3 over 4x minus 1. Now we want to find the value of x here. So here I'm going to do cross multiplication. 4x minus 1 times 1, you will get 4x minus 1. And 3 times 3, you will get 9. 4x is equal to 9 plus 1, you will get 10. And x is equal to 10 divided by 4. So you can give your answer as 2.5. If you don't want, you can just simplify this fraction. Divided by 2, divided by 2. Okay, this is the answer for part A. Now let's look at second part. We want to express m in terms of p. It means that our final answer will be m equal to what, what, what p. Okay? Given by the question, f of m plus 1 is equal to 3 f g of p okay now this is composite function f of g we have here okay f of this whole thing if you if, if the parenthesis here inside the parenthesis you see two here we will plug in two if this is four here we will plug in four now you see the inside the parenthesis is m plus one this means that we are going to bring this m plus one whole thing into here Okay, so it will be 3 over 4x, but this time no longer x, because inside the parentheses is m plus 1. Therefore, we have to write m plus 1 over here. And remember to put a parenthesis. This is 4x minus 1. Now the x is equal to m plus 1. f, g of p, okay. Same thing, if you see p over here, we write p over here for, or also. Now, 3 times 3 over, I just replace that, x become p. Because inside the parenthesis now, it's not x, but it's p. So, 4p squared plus 3. Okay, now, this is, oh, this is 3. Here I'm going to do some expansion, 4 times m, 4m, 4 times 1, okay, 3, 3, you will get 9, 4p squared plus 3, okay, 4 minus 1, you will get 3, now, here I'm going to do cross multiplication, 9, times this whole thing is equal to 3 times this whole thing. 
Okay, so why is, why is our purpose? We want to express m in terms of p. We want to isolate the m. Do some expansion over here. 9, 4, you get 36. 9, 3, 27. Same thing, do some expansion over here as well. 3, 4, you will get 12. 3, 3, you will get 9. Okay, so from here we know that 36m is equal to 12p squared plus 9 minus 27. Okay? Okay, this will give us my, no, negative 18. And I'm going to bring this whole thing, this 36 times m. So I bring the 36 go to another side, it will become divide. m is equal to 12p squared minus 18 divided by 36. So now I am going to simplify it. Let me do some factorization over here first. So I can bring the 6 out. Okay, let me double check. 6, 2, you will get 12. 6, 3, you will get 18. Okay, divided by 6, divided by 6. Okay, so our final answer will be 2p squared minus 3 over 6. Okay, this is the answer for part B. Now let's go to part C fg of x is equal to this, we want to find g of x, means that we want to find the first function. So remember, if you see a composite function like this, this is the first, this is the second, okay? Don't get confused, some students thought that the f is the first function is actually not correct. The, the function which is nearer to the x is the first function. This is the first, and this is the second. Okay, fg of x is equal to this. Let me write this one for you first. If you see g of x over here, it means that here you have to plug in g of x as well, right? But, uh, okay, never mind. Uh, let me do this way first. 3 over 4 times g of x minus 1. Okay, because now you see g of x inside the parentheses. That's why here I write g of x. Okay, if you look the uh, if you look right like this will make you confused. You can uh, use a y or any variable to represent the g of x. So let me use this one. Let y equal to g of x. So now I'm going to replace the g of x uh, by using y, so that it's easier for you to uh, understand. Instead of writing g of x, now I'm going to write y. Okay, this one look easier, right? Now, I want to find g of x, it means that I want to find y. So now, what I'm going to do next is to try to isolate the y. I want to know y is equal to what. Here, I'm going to do cross multiplication. If you don't want, you can just flip over. Because this is 3, this is 3 as well. Definitely here will be equal to this part, right? So I can do it faster by writing this way. 4y minus 1 is equal to 4x squared plus 3. So let's say if you don't understand this step, let me write another way for you. Let's do cross multiplication. So 3 times 4x squared plus 3 is equal to 3 times 4y minus 1. So both sides, you divide by 3, you actually get the same thing. 4x squared plus 3 is equal to 4y minus 1. So what is the purpose? What is our purpose? We want to isolate the y. We want to know y equal to what. So 4x squared plus 3 plus 1 is equal to 4y. So 4x squared plus 4 is equal to 4y. I don't want 4y, I want y, right? So I'm going to divide this whole equation by 4. So this will, let me write this way. 
So this will give us x squared plus 1 is equal to y. What is y? y is g of x, right? Let me write one more step. So g of x is equal to x squared plus 1. Okay, this is the answer for C1. Okay, now part 2. Hence, determine whether the inward function of g of x is exists or not and give your justification. So I try to find the inward function of g. C2. Let. Let. Y is equal to the inward function of g. I want to determine whether the inward function of g exists or not. So g of y is equal to x. g of x is equal to this, right? So g of y will be equal to y squared plus 1. Now I, I want y because this is the inverse of g. OK, let me continue writing here. y squared is equal to x minus 1. And y is equal to plus minus uh, square root of x minus 1. Okay, now this is not this is not a function, right? Because why? This is one to many relation. One to many relation. Which is not a function, right? So from here we know that the inverse function of g of x is does not exist. Okay, because the uh, g inverse of x is equal to this, which is one to many relation. So if you want to explain, you can uh, you can explain here. Which is not a function, which is not a function. Okay, now let's go to the second question. This is also SPM 2021, but this is uh, paper 2 by again A, question 3. Diagram 1 shows the relation of uh, 3 set. Now we have set P, set Q, and set R. We want to find G of X. So be careful. This is the first function, this is the second function, right? First, second. But some students will write it this way. f g of x is equal to 3x minus 4. This is actually not correct. Remember what I told you just now? The function which is nearer to the x will be the, uh, the function which comes first. So from the diagram, you know that f first, then followed by g, right? If you write this way, it's not correct. So you have to write f first, then followed by g like this. So f will be nearer to x because this is a function uh, come first. f followed by g. f, g. So you, you, it will become g f of x, not f g of x. So be careful of this. Okay, from the diagram, we know that this is 3x minus 4, right? We want to find g of x, which is the second function. From this, we know that f of x, f of x is equal to x plus 2, right? So now I'm going to bring this whole thing into here. x plus 2 is equal to 3x minus 4. And then I'm going to let y equal to x plus 2. And I'm going to change the subject of this equation y minus 2 is equal to x. So now I'm going to replace this by y, right? OK. And then I know that x is equal to y minus 2. y minus 2. OK, minus 4. 3x minus 4. 3x minus 4. OK. Do some expansion over here. 
Let me continue writing here. G of y is equal to 3y minus 6 minus 4. And g of y is equal to 3y minus 10. For, for the last step, I just change the y become x. And g of x is equal to 3x minus 10. This is our answer. So if you don't understand this way, let me show you another way. What we are going to find now is g of x, right? So try to think this one. g of x. It is actually equal to this, right? Why? Because you have f, f inverse, these will actually give you x. So eventually you will get g of x. So from here, you know that actually you want to find the, uh, the inverse function of f of x, right? So let me find the inverse function of f of x. So let y equal to f inverse of x. So f of y is equal to x f of x is equal to x plus 2, f of y will be equal to y plus 2. Now I, I know I need the, the y, I need to know y is equal to what, because y is the inverse function which we are looking for. So y is equal to x minus 2, why is y? y is the inverse function, right? So f inverse will be equal to x minus 2. Now I got the inverse function of x, or of f. I'm going to bring this whole thing inside here. Oh, sorry, uh, inside here. So f, g f of x, if this is x, we write x here. If this is 2, we write 2 here. If this is 3, we write 3 here. Now, this is f inverse of x. So what we are going to write, I am going, now this is f inverse of x. So here, I will write f inverse of x as well, which is equal to this. Okay, now do just do some expansion. 3x minus 6 minus 4. You will get exactly the same answer, which is 3x minus 10. Okay, so this is the answer for the part A. Now let's go to part B. We want to find the composite function. This is actually means, uh, you see f square of x here, it means that f of f of x. So two times of the function of f. Okay, f of x is equal to x plus 2, right? And then we are going to go one more time. So if you don't know how to continue doing it, so maybe you can try this way. f of x is equal to x plus 2, right? So I'm going to write x plus 2. Now, if the parenthesis if the inside the parenthesis is x, we write x, right? Now inside the parenthesis is x plus 2. I am going to change the x become x plus 2, okay? Now it becomes x plus 2. So you actually will get x plus 4. So this is uh, f of f of x. So this is the answer for part 1. Now let's go to part 2. So the question asks us to state the function fn of x in terms of n and x. Normally, if you see this type of question, right, you will actually see the trend when you when you do f square f power three f power four and so on. You actually see the trend, then so that you can reduce f power n f x is equal to what. So if you still cannot see it, right. Let me do one more for you. Okay, this is actually equal to f, f square of x, right? Okay, so this one is what we got just now, which is x plus 4. So now I'm going to write x plus 4. Okay, one more times of f, x plus 2, whole thing. This is x plus 2. So you will get x plus 6. Now can, can you see it? If this is 1, here is 2. If this is 2, this is 4. 
If this is 3, this will be 6. So now try to see the trend. This is actually 1 times 2, right? This is actually uh, 2 times 2, right? This is actually 3 times 2. If you have f n of x, it will be equal to x plus n times 2. n times 2, but normally we do not write like this. We will, we will just write 2n. 2n. Okay, this is the answer for B2. Okay, now let's go to the question for SPM 2022. So this is a paper 1. Mark an A, question number 1. Say the object uh, which has no image. You have the question f of x is equal to 3p divided by 6 minus x. So remember just now what I told you, when the x, when you see the x is as a, as a new, uh, denominator of a fraction, we need to state the condition of x. But why the question does not state the condition of x? Because the question wants us to find ourselves. State the object which has no image. Means that when you plug in something inside here, you cannot calculate. It becomes undefined. Okay, so we know 6 minus x cannot be equal to 0, right? So now I'm trying to find what is the value of x will make this whole thing become 0. The x cannot be equal to that value. Okay, x is equal to 6. Therefore, say the object which has no image, the object is 6. The object. Okay, if you don't want to write this one, it's okay. Okay, now let's go to uh, B. So you will notice that the, the, the allocated mark is only one, right? So as long as you give the answer, you don't have to show any step. If the answer correct, then you will get straight away one mark. Okay, now let's go to the second part. Find the value of P. We want to find the value of P. From the diagram, you know that f of 2 will give us 9, right? f of x is equal to this. If this is 2, right? Here we have to write 2 as well. 3p over 6 minus 2 is equal to 9. We want to find the value of p. So 3p over 4 is equal to 9. 3p is equal to 9 times 4, which will give you 36. And p is equal to 36 divided by 3. p is equal to 12. Okay, this is answer for uh, part B. Now, let's try one more question. This is also SPM 2022, but this is uh, at the, this is paper 2, by again A, question number 1. Function f and g are, okay, let me write down first. f of x is equal to 1 minus 2x, and g of x is equal to x squared minus 3. Okay, these are the two functions given by the quotient. Part A. Determine whether g inverse of x is a, not, uh, is a function or not a function. Give a reason. Okay, this one, uh, I think it should be no problem, right? I show it just now. Okay, I just let y equal to g of x. y is equal to x squared minus 3. So y plus 3 is equal to x squared x is equal to plus minus y my uh, y plus 3 square root of y plus 3 so this will become um, y is equal to g of x right so now x is equal to this we know that the inverse of g will be equal to this okay so from here you know this is not a this is not and one-to-one -one relation. To, to be considered to be called as a function, one object, you only can have uh, one image. One, still remember, you learn four types of relation before. Let me write it over here. One, two, one relation. 
one to many relation many to one relation and the last one is many to many relation you learned about this four type of relation before right one to one relation yes is a function because one image will give you uh, sorry one object will give you one image so many to one relation yes this will function as well and one to many it means that one object will give you more than one images this is not a function many to many this is not a function uh, either okay so g equals of one is not a function is not a function because it is a is this and one to many relation so if you don't want to solve it this way if you don't understand this way let me show you another way let y is equal to g inverse of x so g of y is equal to x now i want to find y because y is equal to the thing that we are going to find right g of y is equal to this y square minus 3 is equal to x so y square is equal to x plus 3 y is equal to plus minus square root of x plus 3 and y is equal to y y is equal to this they actually get exactly the same answer this is the way how we uh, present it a slightly different okay now let's go to the part b f inverse of h of x is equal to g of x we want to find h of x so how, how do we solve this of question okay let, let me do it this way okay hopefully you understand this step same thing like what we did just now let's say y is equal to uh, f inverse of x and f of y will be equal to x right so we are using this concept okay h of x we want to find h of x do we have fg of uh, fg of x okay it's not given by our by the question so we have to find ourselves this is a composite function i think it should be no problem now we focus on g of x first g of x which is equal to x squared minus 3 x squared minus 3. now i need to do one more step this is f of x 1 minus 2x 1 minus 2x this whole thing okay h of x is equal to 1 do some expansion over here negative negative become positive okay h of x is equal to 7 minus 2x square 7 minus 2x square okay correct now let's go to the last part given by the quotient g of f inverse of x is equal to 1 we want to find the value of x so first we need to know what is this right let me find the inverse function of f first f of x is given uh, given by the quotient which is 1 minus 2x let y equal to f inverse of x so f y is equal to x 1 minus 2y i want to know y is equal to what okay what is y y is equal to this right now i got the inverse function of f i'm going to bring it here g inverse function of f which is this one is equal to one okay now i need to one one uh, i need to do one more time for the in uh, for the function of g okay if this is x here will be x right 
if this is 1 minus x divided by 2, so here the x I'm going to replace by this whole thing. Or if you get confused, you can do it like this. You just write x squared minus 3 first, because g is g, g of x, right? x squared minus 3. And then, since that inside the parentheses is not x this time, it's 1 minus x over 2, so I'm going to replace this one by 1 minus x over 2. Okay, like this. Now we are going to find the value of x. Mm, let me just write this way. So 1 plus 3, you will get 4. So from here, we know that 1 uh, minus x over 2 is equal to plus minus square root of 4, which is plus minus of 2. Okay, now we should have two answer. 1 minus x over 2 is equal to 2, or 1 minus x over 2 is equal to negative 2. So 1 minus x is equal to 4, x is equal to 5. This is one of the answer, and we have another answer over here. 1 minus x is equal to negative 4, so x is equal to Sorry, let me check again. Oh, sorry, my fault. This I I make a mistake over here. One minus x is equal to four, right? So x is actually equal to one minus four. So x is equal to negative three. So this is one of the answer. Let's go to the other one. I think this one should be five, right? X is equal to five. Okay. So the answer is negative 3 and 5. That's all for this video. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.